Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to what does the Queen's Guard actually do? So I've seen many videos with them in it, reacted to many of them in it, but I've never watched anything what they what their duties are from day to day. And we all know them just as tourists, as just guarding royalty, royal the palaces, the queen, etc., and keeping them safe and just doing their duty there. A lot of times people will I watched one where people were kind of messing with the Queen's Guard, which is a big, uh, big deal. Definitely do not do anything like that. Cause they, I found out they lose a week's of pay if they even smile, something along those lines. So the more I watch and learn about the Queen's Guard, the more interesting they get, their, their role, their history, all of that, and this is going just to be their day-to-day -day duties, I hope, and what they actually do. So let's let's just jump in and see what they uh, have to say. This is by the Infographic Show. What do they actually do? Elizabeth II is the longest-serving British monarch and is the current longest-serving monarch in the world. Since she took the throne in 1952, much has changed in the UK. You could say the British people are not on the whole as enamored with the royal family as they were when she took the throne. But despite polls in 2018 revealing that two-thirds of the British public were not interested in the royal wedding, it seems for the most part people are not interested in getting rid of their royals. We can only find one instance when someone planned to take out the Queen, and that was only revealed years later when declassified spy papers told us a New Zealand teenager had planned to do just that in 1981. Real quick, just on pause it real quick. Is that true with what they first said? Not the not the attempt on her, but um, the popularity of the queen and just royals in general was much more back in the day than it is now. I mean, I think in general, with countries in general now, the nationalism, the patriotism is less than back in the day, especially, you know, for example, my grandparents' generation. Uh, with World War II and everything, like all all nationalism, all patriotism was at like all time highs because what was going on in the world. So I could understand that, but I still feel like the love and respect for the queen and the royals and the family, what they do, what they represent is still very high, but maybe I'm wrong. So what do the Queen's Guard do with themselves all day? Welcome to this episode yeah, of the Infographic Show. It. What does the them. Queen's Guard They're actually so cool. do? If you saw our show titled How Much Protection Does the Royal Family Get, you'll know that the Royal Family has around the clock protection, and that comes in many forms. We're not just talking about the main royals that we all know, but the many other members of this family. The Queen might be supported by her guards, but you have other outfits such as Scotland Yard's Royalty and Specialist Protection Service, also offering armed protection when she's at home and when she goes on the road. While it seems the royals don't have many enemies, who knows if someone is willing to spend years in prison for their five minutes of fame. That's why when you see her driving down the street, she'll be surrounded by an armed and very skilled special escort group. So with this in mind, does she really need a Queen's Guard? First of all, you all likely know who we're talking about when we say the Queen's Guard, since you've all seen pictures of these yep. men that wear those large furry hats and dress yep. in red and black. These people are not just for show, however, and they fill a role in protecting the Queen. The Guard is made up of infantry and cavalry soldiers, and they work in what's called the Household Division. That means you'll find them doing their duty at Buckingham Palace, St. James Palace, Windsor Castle, and some other places. One source tells us that the Queen spends most of her time at Buckingham Palace, although she goes to Windsor Castle on most weekends, visits Balmoral Castle in Scotland for long periods of time, and for Christmas often visits Sandringham House in Norfolk. We're told that the Queen's Guard is mainly split into yes. two parts. And those two parts will be posted either at Buckingham Palace or St. James Palace. When the Queen is staying at Buckingham Palace, there are usually three officers working there as well as 40 other ranks. Ooh, there will also be four sentries at the palace. They work night and day, sometimes staying in one spot, while others will walk around the grounds. The foot guards might be part of the Grenadier Guards, the Scots Guards, the Irish Guards, the Welsh Guards, or the Coldstream Guards. If you Never visit Buckingham Palace at the right time, you might actually see the changing of the guard. Okay, so now we should ask if these guys ever have any trouble. In the past, the guards did have a few run-ins with a disgruntled public, but for the most part in modern times, 
they haven't really been tested. Perhaps the biggest case in some blushes for the guards was when a man called Michael Fagan managed to get past them in 1982 and, believe it or not, get into the Queen's bedroom. This was a huge thing back in the day. Some sources, maybe not wow. that reliable, say that Fagan only did it because he had been in the pub with his friends and he had bet them five pounds that he could get into the Queen's bedroom. And this is one crazy that that could even happen. I feel like it needs these events to actually tighten up and find the security flaws within Buckingham Palace, for example. I know this happened more recently. I think it was in the US for, I think it was Obama's term uh, years back that two people that were not invited were all around all these people like the, the president of the first lady and they were not invited. They weren't supposed to be there. It's just like a huge security flaw. A bunch of people had to leave and resign and it was a huge mess. And now I think it kind of takes that to tighten everything up. It's pretty wild that this was before social media, thankfully. So, and, and the internet, so really exploded in the 90s, I guess, in 90s and then um, after. So at least it wasn't for fame in that aspect. Thank goodness, because people are pretty crazy nowadays with that. He managed to scale a wall, climb up a drain pipe, and then it said by sheer luck, he ended up on the balcony outside the right bedroom. There are after all many bedrooms in Buckingham Palace. Stories differ as to what happened next, with some reports saying the Queen was startled and Fagan said to her, relax sister, you don't have to worry I'm Irish. We doubt the veracity of the source though. Other reports say he just yeah. left the room and was subsequently apprehended by police, who probably should have been on the scene sooner. He was not charged for trespassing, but for stealing some royal wine. In the end, he was sent to a psychiatric hospital. After hearing Damn. this, you might be wondering where the Queen's Guard were, but the Queen's Guards were already beaten as they remained outside the palace. The fault was theirs, but also the police officer that was supposed to be guarding the room. The sentry job sounds kind of boring, as they just stand there for long periods of time. We are told that they have the order. You may not eat, sleep, smoke, stand easy, sit, or lie down during your tour of duty. In a two-hour period every 10 minutes, they will pace back and forth where they are stationed. This can be amusing for tourists as the sentries look so serious. Tourists in the past have gotten in the way of the sentry, and if that happened, he would shout, make way for the Queen's Guard. He might also shout, stand back from the Queen's Guard. We watched a video on this. It was just, one, once again, people messing with them and getting in the way of them, and they'll just plow through you and anyone else that's in their way, and they will yell this. They will yell things like this, and uh, some people are just completely oblivious, so just know where you're going, know the country that you're going, be respectful. Do some and if that research. isn't heated, then he's forced to point his rifle at you. Unfortunately, Ooh. some members of the public, mostly tourists, still get in these guards' way, and so their posts have largely been removed from where they could be interfered with. In an interview, one guard said that being tormented by tourists was starting to take its toll, and he was glad their posts were now in a place where the public couldn't get too close. Yeah, that's he told great. Stars and Stripes in the US, it's about time. We've had enough of that lot. They'd stick pins in you, some of them. Another guard said that it was fine that people wanted photos and even got up close, but he said some tourists would throw banana skins in their path, while others would stick oranges in their bayonets or pull their bearskin busby hats. That same guard said this, which doesn't that's sound horrible. all that bad. Women sometimes wanted to come up and try to hold hands. Lots of women slip things into our pocket when we're wearing greatcoats. Things like addresses and telephone numbers. The Australian media said in 2018, people must be aware that while guards may seem unshakable, if someone really does something to annoy them or become too much of a nuisance, they will react. Still, one guardsman said most of the time their weapons are not loaded. You only carry live rounds if there's a high threat level that someone will attack, he said. But I've never carried any. According to him, they must look serious at all times. If they're caught laughing or even chatting with a tourist, he said they're liable to be fined around $355. You're allowed to get them away by shouting. And I think that that what they're fined if they do smile, laugh, just kind of break protocol is roughly a week's wage. So that that's pretty huge. Warnings at them, the guard said. If they fail to move or start to act aggressively, we present our bayonets to remind them that we can do more harm than them. Another thing is, all that standing can be hard work, and some guards have been known to pass out. 
If they think they're going to faint, it's said that they have to do that in a disciplined way. It's called a faint to attention. You have to faint to attention, a Major Di Bevan of the Welsh Guards told the Times newspaper. It will probably involve a broken nose and a whole lot of missing teeth. You can find photos online of what it looks like, but it seems that they also have some fun. An article in BuzzFeed which took the information from former guards tells us that they would give each other funny or sometimes insulting nicknames. They would act around, too, with one guard trying to say if they got the chance to sit on the throne, they would do it and take a selfie. If you get a chance to sit on the throne of England, you aren't going to pass it up, he said. Other documents say some yeah. guards would allow their friends to park in St. James Palace, while another document said some guards would sneak the lady friends of Prince Andrew into the palace. So while they might look like inhumans to the tourist, they are certainly not unlike any of the rest of us. In a Reddit Q&A, a guard talked about many aspects of his work, saying if you want to be one of them, you must pass a few tests and also have the smarts about you. He said that it helps to I be bet. tall. He said that while much of what they do is ceremonial, they are also security. And I heard in another previous video, you're supposed to, it used to be that they wanted you to be 6'2", I believe it was, uh, six foot two and now they brought it down to 5'10 for the height of the guard. So that's interesting. Once again, this reminds me, they remind me a lot of aspects of, of the Swiss guard at the Vatican, a lot of things that are similar. He just and added cool. that if things do turn awry, police are usually there as a backup. Asked if he ever had spoken to the queen, he replied, yeah. When I was at guard on Windsor Castle, she came up to me with her husband and the dogs and asked me some questions. She's really nice. He That's seemed awesome. to like his job, saying only occasionally people would try and annoy him. Although he did say on any given day about 200 tourists would try and make him laugh. He also said the job gets tiresome, so you have to amuse yourself. When I'm really bored, I like to mess people's pictures up. When a load of Asian tourists came and set up a huge picture, I waited until the cameraman was counting down to take the pic, and then marched up and down my post until they all left. He oh. also said that sometimes, perhaps the most embarrassing times, is when a guard needs to urinate but has nowhere to go. He said occasionally you'll see a puddle underneath the guard's feet. All right, on to the advertisement there. All right, so we'll go back, not to the puddle part. Perfect, the girl messing with the guard. Yeah, up to 200 people a day on average, trying to make them laugh. I think that comes from all of the, once again, social media and the videos of them trying to make them laugh. And it's pretty horrible once you realize what happens to them if you do make them smile. It's just like this weird craze on the internet to try to do this. I don't know, I don't know what's up with it, um, but don't do it, it's simple. Don't mess with them. But this is a good, more broad view that I have now of what the Queen's Guard actually do. More in-depth things about it. And it's really cool that the Queen at the Guard at Windsor Castle came up to him and just kind of had like a small conversation with him, which was awesome. I, I love how just so personable and just like a normal person walking her dogs with her husband and just, just having a having a chat with someone else, maybe asking random questions. I love that aspect and I think that's one of the many, many reasons why people like one, the guard so much, all these reasons that um, they are a touristy kind of destination to go see these guards. If you're in London for the first time, you especially want to see these guards. I know I did and then just, just the reactions what they had of they could go on the throne if they wanted to. It seems kind of like a, if you're, it's it's like an honor to your country to be one of these guards. I don't know what their pay is. It sounded like what they're on two hours shifts, if that if that was correct. But it doesn't seem like overly bad, if you, especially if you're kind of into this whole thing anyways. It's like a lot of other positions from around the world. Slightly different. I could see how maybe if I was, uh, I was British, I would be down for this if I was in the military. That's a question for me too. Like, do you have to be in the military to be, to kind of apply for these positions, kind of to prove yourself? Or can you just kind of come out of college or, or high school, whatever, whatever is a primary school and become a guard, just do the tests and become a guard. I'm not sure how that works. Because once again, in the Vatican, I know they have to be in the Swiss military for a certain amount of years before they could even try to become a Swiss guard at the Vatican. But overall, good video, great video, learning more about these, the, the Queen's Guard. Everyone knows them. They're, they're, they, we grew up with them in movies and TV shows. You see them in pictures all the time. Very popular, 
very fun to go see and you kind of see this background of their real day-to-day -day life and job and they are very serious out front because it's their job their duty uh, and uh, they could be they're just fun and normal people behind the scenes which is fantastic of course but it's kind of hard to imagine that when you see them so thanks for watching thanks for joining and until next time we'll dive into more have a good rest of your day